Thank you. So um, I don't have a lot of slides. Um, in fact, I don't have any slides. Uh, but but I have <laughs> but I have some things to to uh, to show. Okay. So that's the talking. Okay, other way. <laughs> this way. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, eh, sorry, wait, 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 wait. If I do this, I can't tell. I have to, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so trust me, I have prepared a little bit, uh, but not too much. So I'm going to talk about um, this feature called CSS counters. Now, some of you may know about these already. Uh, I, I didn't until, I don't know, maybe a few months ago. And uh, I... I wanted to give a talk here at Singapore CSS, and I figured this would be a good one. But as I was uh, thinking about what to say, I realized that there was something, there was a, there was a deeper meaning to this. All right, so uh, probably halfway through, I will become a bit like rambly uh, and stop talking about counters. But just uh, you know, too bad. Uh, <laughs> so, so. Okay, one day I woke up and I decided I had to make a, a list of things that I love. Okay, and this is a non-exhaustive list. Uh, React, CSS, JS, uh, Jamstack. If you don't know what that is, stick around at the end. Um, and uh, of course, being a you know engineer at heart, I wanted to label it in a. I wanted to number it in a uh, in a sensible fashion, right? So. Uh, of course, I can do that, right? Uh, like we just saw, JavaScript is really powerful. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to go deeply into the code, but the output is that the, the top level is 1, 2, 3, then it's like 1.1, 1.2, blah, 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 kind of like your exam questions, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so OK, long story short, so can you see? Um, so, long story short, I put a, uh, I, I, I put an array of, of the things that I want to to show up here, and then I wrote a questionable function down here to uh, to to display it. Um, so it's recursive, which is already a bit like, mm, okay, uh, am I trying to make a point or uh, or not? But uh, th there's two parts. So the first part, the first thing it does is it it renders uh, some React. Uh, some some list items uh, inside an, an ordered list. That's fine. Uh, that's got nothing to do with counting. But the second part is it's got this funny uh, argument that I put here called depth. And this is where I try to include the logic of iterating and counting and adding the like sections. So like 1.1 1 .1 and then, so that's two sections. 1.1.1 1 .1 .1 is three sections. So. I got it to work, right? As you can see, but uh, it's kind of questionable. And what's questionable about it is that it's not very readable. Okay, there's there's kind of a lot of uh, weird things going on. the The logic to calculate the the numbers is is tightly coupled to them being like numbers. And if I wanted to have a different kind of counting system, um, this is not going to work. So it's kind of fragile. So, um, but it works, right? So job done, right? <laughs> OK, obviously not. Uh, there is a better way, arguably a better way. Uh, I think it's better. And I'm going to show you what that is. Um, and OK, to make the point, I've, I've taken out all the, the JavaScript. So uh, it's the same list. Here is the CSS. It's like structurally, it's the same thing. It's ordered list with list items and, and there's nested stuff. But if you notice, I've got the exact same numbering system, uh, and and there's no JavaScript, right? So so how did I do that? Wouldn't you like to know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, 
So, okay. So, so this is the HTML, and uh, how I did this was. Uh, oh, okay. Let's see. Um, basically, all the logic, all that complex logic in the questionable JavaScript function, is reduced to uh, basically these. Uh, okay, not even this one. Basically, to these seven lines, so 11 to 13 and 20 to uh, 23. Uh, and fun fact, this is more declarative than React, so yeah, think about that. Uh, so what, what, what happens here basically is um, <clears throat> CSS has this feature called counters, okay? And uh, what counters let you do is they, they give you a, a solution to uh, count things. <laughs> um, and how this works is you, you use this, uh, this property called counter reset, and you give your, your counter a name. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here and go straight to the nested counters uh, example, which is what I've got here. Um, so what I've said here is I, I have a counter called section on every ordered list. And uh, in each list item, I increment that counter, right? So if we go back to the uh, HTML, we can see that there's, there's more than one uh, level of ordered list. There's the top level, and then each like, sub-list is, is another ordered list. So what's happening here is that the, uh, the section counter in each child ordered list increments it itself as well. Um, and then for each one of those, the list items in that ordered list also increment. So the point of CSS counters is you don't actually have to understand that too much. Um, all you have to do, all you have to know is that you can use the counter reset property to, to, get a, to create a counter, and then you can access the value of the counter. And you can do that through this function, this built-in CSS function called counters. So you give it a name, uh, section, which is, which is the, the counter that we, we declared, and you, you join it with a, a separator. So, so this could be something else. Um, and, and, and basically, that's it. Uh, so, so here's where the opinions and the ramblings start. Uh, <laughs> so this is great, right? The, the, it, it achieves what I needed. It's, in my opinion, a lot cleaner. Um, your mileage might vary, of course, um, but I think this is a lot cleaner. But I did have to figure it out, right? I, I didn't know this beforehand, and it wasn't immediately obvious to me like how this works, uh, especially with the, with the nested um, counters example. So, uh, the, the, the fact that there was another solution to my problem that I didn't know sounds like non-knowledge, but it's a bit more significant than that because um, I was listening to uh, this speaker called Richard Harris, who's the creator of Svelte.js. Um, don't worry about that, it's a JavaScript thing. Uh, um, and in his talk, he said, uh, uh, frameworks are for, uh, we use frameworks to not to help us organize code, but to help us organize our minds. And this was like, like I was mind blown when I heard this, because uh, it's not just frameworks, right? It's actually almost everything that we as engineers use, especially the high level languages like, um, like JavaScript and CSS and all that. So, uh, so, so, so this was quite a, a, a revelationary moment when I heard this. And I'm trying now to apply that to everything that I, that I think about. Um, so in general, when we, when we create these solutions, we're not doing it for the benefit of the machine that's running our code, right? We're doing it for the benefit of ourselves and the other people looking at the, at the code. So what this means is that there's a lot of people out there trying to make your life better. And uh, they are like your strange friends from faraway places, 
right? The person that, that invented CSS counters, I don't know them, but their solution has, uh, has helped me. And they did, it, they, you know, they did it for me, right? They did it for me and all the other people that want to make lists of things they love um, and other lists. So uh, even though I didn't know how this works, and when I looked at the Mozilla, the MDN docs, initially I was like, yeah, I kind of get it, but you know, don't really get it. Uh, I felt I owed it to this person to figure it out because they've created a solution for me that, um, that may be better than the one that I knew already. So, uh, so really, at the end of the day, it's not about like, a, a lot of what we do is not about code, but it's about people. And this is something that's quite important to, to me. And so when you, in our profession, when, when we do things like, you know, use CSS counters, we're, we're creating connections with other people. We are, I, I feel like, okay, I feel like I've, I've made a connection with the person that invented CSS or, or created CSS counters, right? Um, they've, they've affected my life in some way. And that's like, that's quite, uh, it's quite a profound realization that, that we've, we've all invented all this stuff, right, for each other. So, uh, and it's not just relevant for things like, like massive public things like CSS. When you look at a code base, a new code base, it's, it's you know, I, I'm sure everyone has looked at a new code base and thought that it sucks, right? Um, but but it, it doesn't matter if it sucks, right? Because um, it's been written by someone, and when you read it and you understand it, you are like communicating with them on a different level. So, uh, yeah, I think that's quite enough. <laughs> uh, so half half CSS counters, half like you know life. Um, <laughs> but I, I hope you get get my point here, which is that um, there's. Especially with, with CSS, you know, in this day and age, there's a lot of like hot takes on it and a lot of shade and stuff. Um, but the important thing I think is to uh, not 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 to dismiss uh, like solutions outright, because uh, they've been created by somebody that's trying to do the same thing as you, and they've done it one way, and it's not the way that you might be familiar with, but it might be a better way than than the way that you are familiar with. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sure, ask, ask questions. Yeah. Uh, ask Wait, about counters or about life? Well, <laughs> <laughs> anything goes, because well, he puts himself in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find out about counters? Uh, I saw it on a tweet. I, I can't remember, yeah. I can't remember what, which tweet. But uh, should I keep this on? Yeah. Um, it was a tweet, yeah. I think it was, oh no, I can't remember, but, but it was a tweet. And uh, I, I think what struck me was it, it was a problem which I would have instinctively gone JavaScript to solve. And there was actually something else, um, non-JavaScript, non and much more uh, like a first-class solution for it. And how do you feel about the founder or the creators of Code Sandbox? Uh, is that a trick question? No, it's just, uh, you know, for life, like affecting your life. Code Sandbox? <laughs> I love Code Sandbox. I think it's uh, one of the, the, the greatest tools. That, OK, sorry, that's a bit extreme. Uh, I think it's a fantastic tool. Um, it, uh, oh, yeah, so yeah, that reminds me. When I, so if, if you notice, I actually had two, two sandboxes. So when I made the first one, I, I, you know, I hit the, the blue, uh, no, the, the blue, like create the React sandbox, the empty sandbox. And then when I did this, I went into something extreme and I hit the, the brown one, which is the vanilla sandbox. Mm. No React. Good job, sir. Yeah. So, so good job for sandbox for having that code sandbox. <laughs>